I've got just a little shot here, and it is a noisy, busy shot. Uh, not to mention it could also use some color correction, but we're not talking about that today. There's a lot about this shot I want to talk about, um, but today I want to talk about the fact that it's not that great as far as composition-wise. I don't have a backlight behind me. I'm not glowing, uh, so I don't really pop from the very distracting background. I'm in a rental house, and i got a small office, so I'm not doing a paint job myself on this door anytime soon, so it's very distracting. There's also a messy desk that's had uh, my child put a bunch of stamp uh, on it one day when I wasn't paying attention. Uh, so it's got a lot of things that are just distracting that don't make it a good shot plus my messy work desks there. Uh, I could have cleaned it up a bit more but I was kind of like oof lost cause is a lost cause right. So one thing you can do is actually add a vignette. Now a vignette while a lot of times can take place naturally when you add one digitally it's mostly because you want to make your subject in the middle pop and you want to get rid of some of the distracting features. It's really when the director or the editor is thinking hey you should focus on this not on this other stuff. So for this shot, it's a great candidate for a vignette. I'm going to go to this vignette here and I'm going to grab the default and drag it over and you're going to see instantly that uh, it really does help the eye, the subject, me, focus pop right there um, as opposed to all this distracting clutter around it. So that's why you would use a vignette. And here's some things you can change about it. You can change the outer radius which is essentially how much is going to close in on you. See that little Looney Tunes circle close there? Um, you can change the outer radius of it. You can change the inner radius of it, which is essentially, let me let me get this outer radius smaller so you can see. The inner radius is how, um, how that fall off works, how much feathering is. So does it go instantly from bright to black? Uh, or does it have a little bit of a feather and a fall off in that? Uh, also, you can change the shape of it too. You can make it long or short. Um, this would be fun if you want to do uh, like an eyeball and there you go. That's that's some ideas for you. Or if you want to make it look like you're looking through a keyhole at something, that is also uh, another idea for you. Another reason you would want to use a vignette of some sort. Uh, and also you can control the feathering that also so the fall off is more about the lighting behind it, but the feathering is more about how much it bleeds together. So they're they're similar, but not the exact same thing, right? Uh, so you can get a lot of control over that. And uh, the color here too, when you want to edit the color, you can actually just change the color you're putting in. So a lot of times you just do it black. Um, but you know, let's say you're looking through, um, uh, if, if you're doing the keyhole effect, maybe you're looking through uh, a red curtain or something. So you would want to do a really, you'd probably still need it really dark, but maybe, you know, that with a lot of feathering and maybe a white, like a more, more feathering, I would say. You know, now, uh, and let's, let's drop the center down a little bit. Now we've got a little bit of a peek through a curtain look, right? Like somebody's peeking through a curtain there. That is another example of how, of how you could use a vignette, and you can do all this with the Vegas uh, software here. But um, and inverting it just changes how this works. So if you want to obscure something instead of highlight something, then you could use the invert, uh, invert effect. So uh, something I want to note. Let me go back to default here. Um, if you want to like zoom in or close in on somebody, you can actually use these clock animate effects here. You can hit the clock on this outer radius and then right at the end of the clip if you hit this uh, sync cursor to media timeline you'll actually move the media on the timeline while you're working this little miniature timeline here. Let's say at the end of it I wanted to uh, zoom in on my face as I'm drinking this blended controller here. I'm actually blending little oculus controller just for funsies we're going to talk more about that in another tutorial how to do that effect there but um let's say right here is where i want the radius to close in so i'm going to boom close in that inner radius there right at the end and you'll see over time as i arrow through that this closes in so now if we want to add a keyframe and move it we can go to the center right here start at the beginning make sure that nothing changes, then go to the end and move where we want this centerpiece to end, do at the end. And so you can see that little dot there, it makes another keyframe uh, about where it's all gonna be positioned. So now we can watch it move and close in 
on my face. You can see the centering changes over time. Uh, and so you can dial in all these effects and that is a lot of uses for a vignette. But something I want to highlight is there is another way to do it. How I did it before they added the vignette plugin is a uh, cookie cutter. Now cookie cutter is got a lot more things to it. It's really just like masking, uh, but it's quick masking. So cookie cutter is a jack of all trades, master of none kind of effect. Uh, but I like it. I like it a lot because it's a quick way to do a lot of things. I actually used it in my split screen tutorial as well. Uh, not that there's not seven ways to skin this cat, but this is one way that you can do another vignette. Uh, and this gives you some more options. We're going to talk about that. So first off, you can change the shape and you got more options than you do uh, with just the vignette effect if you're going for something particular like a keyhole or something like that. You, you have a few more things that can help you achieve certain looks or certain types of masking that you want. Um, but we're just going to go with circle right now. You can still do that vignette effect. You see you can add a feathering there and you can change the size of it. And you can even change the shape, let's say oval, on, let's say just an oval. There we go. So now we got something that looks similar to the original vignette. It's a little harsher on the corners. It's a little less uh, uh, exact for than the other one, but it is yet another way to do it. It can also be moved around and repositioned. So, but the really the strength of this one is you can do more. Um, you can do more exact vignetting. So if you wanted like a music video that was having a little more stylized, a little more surreal of a vignette, you could do things like diamonds and arrowheads and stuff like that that could really kind of help focus in on different people moving around the screen. So, uh, and all of these can be animated as well with very similar settings to the vignette effect. So that is two different ways to vignette items in Vegas Pro 18. Uh, like this video helped you out. Subscribe if you're looking for more videos like this one. Sorry it took me so long to get some more Vegas tutorials out. I had a lot going on, but I am back. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.